I feel like a buffoon. The branch is closed at half past three in the afternoon. And I don't know. Ugh, this, I just I can't deal with these masks. Somebody arrest me. Do it. Up where they? Half past three. Whatever. Bye. I don't even know. You know what? Like, arrest me. I don't even know why. But when I got first to Africa, you know, I'd like. Everything off yours falls apart for a purpose. You know why I imagine Standard Bank was open? Because I think the one at the airport is open like 24 hours a day, precisely to accommodate international traveler needs. Um, so, go airport I saw that, I mean, it was a time when I dropped off my sister at the airport, very late, and the banks there were open. So, if that was Africa wants to put itself on the world stage as an international trader or somebody that is worth their while, the while of international organizations to look at. Why in the world are they banks closing at 3 p.m.? I mean, imagine if I was a tourist. Somebody tell me, if you're coming from the United Kingdom, from the United States, wherever, else, you know, wherever you might find yourself, what time do your banks close? So when then you visit South Africa and you think about the standards of your nation and then want to use a bank, perhaps the Bureau de Change or whatever, to change your dollars into rands, and you go to a bank at like 4 p.m. in the afternoon and find it closed, but you not find yourself frustrated by the littleness of what is obviously a country that should no longer be a third world country but has stayed one on a leave land because it's just not on par with what I'm trying to do. I'm bigger than this country. I'm so much bigger and it is so little. I feel like Alice, you know, Alice in Alice in Wonderland, how she eats this little biscuit and then she becomes too big for some house and has to crouch down just to walk through this country's like that. It's like a house that Alice walked into and she has to crouch just to get around. It's too small. And do you know the very thing that I'm talking about now is why Trevor Noah left South Africa and it's also why Elon Musk left South Africa in order to do what it is that he needed to do. Elon wanted to say that if he's going to have his big fat chunky mind, his pioneering energized mind, really taken seriously in order, what, uh, in order to do what he wants to do in the world, he would have to leave his backyard. So now he's in the United States. Trevor Noah was scooped, yes, he was headhunted, but he tried very much to get out of South Africa because the littleness of the scene here was just too suffocating. He felt claustrophobic. And so he strove to break out and he did. And now he is the gargantuan um, <clears throat> man that he is. I'm trying to, I, I just, I don't understand. Like, is this because Africa is as small as it is because it can't be big? Or is it because it's cursed? Like there's just so much witchcraft in operation in this country that no one can do what they need to do with it. Oh, they're bigger than what it is that the demons in this environment want us to stay as. We stay tiny. Yeah, I'm back, guys. I'm uncomfortable with my mask off. Somebody might just walk up here and arrest me for something I didn't sign up for. So I'll see you in the car. Bye. I forgot my ticket in the car. It turns out FNB is the only bank that is up to scratch with international standards. They're still open. Net Bank is closed. Standard Bank is closed. Um, when banks used to close at 3 p.m., I think I was a teenager, you had to rush to get to the bank. And I also couldn't understand why it is that their working hours are like that because most people just can't get there at that time. Uh, you People go to work during the week. People, they also, they're first of all open like at 9 in the morning or something, and they close at like 3. We have to be at work in the office at 9, at school, in Tosejuano. And so the only time that people can really get off to do their banking is yes fine so during lunch and on weekends but every so often maybe you want to just hop in there after work or knock off early precisely because you have something important to do at the bank and South Africa has made that impossible to happen I mean it's like 2022 guys as a teenager I know that they did extend working hours for banks I remember that happening because I used to work in the financial services industry and so when there were when there was a reshuffle of banking hours where did I park that car oh here ah and I parked like a nasty um reshuffling of working hours but that's only because a guy parked next to me was also parked like a nasty. I apologize. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Do you want me to move? Are you cool? Okay, so um, I actually need to fetch a ticket here. I'm parked so horrendously, but the guy next to the door is okay with it. Are you? Should I move the car? You're fine. All right, Shab. Oh, okay. Well, hello. Black man, I was just greeting you. Well, thank you. Hello, bye. Uh, moving on. So. Yes, I was over there, like during the transformation of working hours. Um, but I left financial services industry around that time, so like the early 2000s or whatever. Uh, I would have imagined that the working hours would then have stayed or improved as time progressed. I mean, we're apparently on a globalistic scale where everybody is integrating with one another and systems are just fluid. And yet here it is as African banks in a mall in a neighborhood that is middle to upper middle class. It's closed at half past three. This is the kind of place that tourists would probably come to quickly and readily to stay in. Like in a lot of bed and breakfast. <clears throat> okay.
free parking. I chose it that way. Oh, sorry, 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 oh, sorry. sorry, sorry. <laughs> like if you um, imagine that Huatura in Santon, your next bet would probably be around here in Volkajevo. It's like the next best place to come for tourists. So if it is a touristy sort of kind of setup, it's not quite Santon, but it is close. How in the world is it are its banks in such a mall as this one, closing at half past three? It's the defeatism of this African economy. And it is also strange because they can improve, they can do better, they can come on par with international standards. They just won't, however. Like, they just choose not to. They just choose not to. Like, it's, it's all in the choice, like, that basic. <laughs> Tell me when it'll ever stop, I don't know. When I was young, like, what? In the very beginning stages of my career, did I not love the car? Hey, hey. In the very beginning stages of my career, as a kid, I worked for financial services companies and they were fixing the stuff. I'm 37 now, so what, like that was 10, 15 years ago? And it turns out things are the same. So when they were busy changing working hours, they were speaking about just 15 minutes. Are you still not speaking? Half an hour? Are you still in a mall? In a mall? Like, this is not one moment. Some random, I was just cleaning my camera lens. Okay, I'm back with this view because it shows all of me. And I'm like, who doesn't want to see all of me? Anyway. Um, it's not like it's a mall, sorry, like some downtown Joburg branch that, uh, you know, the bustling nature of downtown Joburg simmers down later on in the day because people go home, people don't generally stay in downtown Joburg, they usually, like, branch out to the periphery, like a spider's connection into the east, west, north and south of Joburg, etc. So that, that would make sense, why it is that banks would close perhaps maybe at 4pm maximum there, but in, in, in neighborhood in suburbia, like, where is that we're at right now, and in a mall, no, it's not a standalone branch chilling in some arbitrary spot, for them to close the bank, at half past three, are they literally trying to not make money? Are they literally trying to ward off tourists? Are they literally, I mean, proper, we come out of like coronavirus ransacking of global economies and they're not even trying to recover by at least extending their working hours. I mean, can you imagine? So Coca-Cola, I know, I can be laborious, all right? Coca-Cola, I can be loquacious. I can speak for like everyone in a day. So if you want to click off, don't, okay? Like what? I'm interesting. Coca-Cola uh, did a sneaky little funny thing to us a couple of years back where it is that the 340 milliliter um, can was reduced hmm, conveniently to 330 milliliters. I remember thinking the marketing manager, the uh, industrial engineer, the stock whatever, like the the, the the pricing modeler, like the people, the, the financial team of Coca-Cola. I remember thinking whoever came up with this is just ugh, brilliant, even though sneaky on the consumer. Sneaky, like I want my 10 milliliters. What are you doing to me, Coca-Cola, with my 10 milliliters? I can't deal. I can't. Give me back my 10 milliliters. But just the extraction of that 10 milliliters uh, from 330 to 40, sorry, to 330 milliliters, just that extraction. Uh, I mean, my goodness, I could just imagine it was already a very bountiful organization it was already doing very well it was already killing it okay like coca-cola is a global brand one of the most recognizable ones in the world so it didn't really need a bolt or a juice or a push but you know profiteering is a thing in corporate so whatever to get their bottom line their markets ever more inflated what then they made a decision to do and i think it was brilliant on the part of coca-cola not so much for the consumer was to reduce their cans from 330 milliliters to 340 to 330 milliliters uh, per can. The can still looked exactly the same on the outside, so I mean perception management, right? So people think they're still buying the same can of Coca-Cola, but it is literally smaller by 10 milliliters. There is there's, There are 10 milliliters less of liquid in there, and there also are 10 milliliters less in terms of size, like the dimensions of the actual can, meaning that if you were to like operate on scale, scale just the savings and also the additional profit made from that 10 milliliters that is going to then be incorporated into other coca-cola cans and also the materials the raw materials required to make the actual can just in terms of scale if then like a person or an organization buys one million coca-colas two million one billion coca-cola cans a, a, a portion of that i mean what, what is the percentage of the, uh, let's just like keep it light, like seven percent seven percent of that last 10 milliliters is now going to be money making it's going to be monetized in another way in that they are like seven percent of a batch that is sold never used to exist before so they have inflated their margins by like seven percent not only in terms of raw materials but also in terms of the amount of coca-cola uh the 10 milliliters and that 10 milliliters if you just multiply it by 34 by 33 sorry you've then got another can so per every 33 um 10 milliliter cans that are on the shelf there is a brand spanking new one that's chilling them that's basically free that that is basically at, the, at zero cost to coca-cola but at the price of one can for you so multiply that on a scale and imagine the profits that coca-cola made 
and it's still making to this day because they're not just in coca-cola vibes they're in sprite you know it's a company that sells all these other beverages um and in so reducing the can to 10 to by 10 milliliters only and perceptually the consumer imagines they're drinking the same thing it's not false advertising because it's there on the can it's 330 right the price has not changed coca-cola makes that much more money just from reducing the size that is called business savvy it's being it's being a brain boffin do you understand when it comes to business models if coca-cola could do something so astronomically intelligent as that why in the world is south africa not thinking like coca-cola it's not like we don't have coca-cola type minds in the country it's that they're kicking them to the United States and the, the United Kingdom and Australia and Canada. They're kicking us away. They're taking away some of their biggest and baddest minds in the game and they're making them create Tesla cars and Tesla bots in the US while the US gets all of the credit while South Africa could. I keep on lamenting that this country has got this like third world status and I don't know what's going on. I mean, you guys have seen me recording on my device, my country and what it looks like. Just on my own background and I mean, I am living in squalor. You can tell it's a beautiful land. You can tell that our malls are quite, you know, top-notch quality. We are an excellent country. Frankly, looking at the background in South Africa is like looking at that like isolated, random, parched airport in Pyongyang in North Korea. It is, um, you know, it's like it's empty. It's bereft, it's barren. There's like nobody on the inside of it yet. It's so gorge. It's so beautiful. It's got world standards in terms of its airporting. However, there's nobody there. There's no one there because Kim Jong-un is a no-brainer. Kim Jong-un is like a prisoner. He's a jailer. Not a prisoner, but he's an imprisoner. He's a jailer. He has jailed his countrymen. And he has made his country this like taboo. He's a pariah state. And so therefore, people when they travel there, it's just out of curiosity to see if this guy's really that abusive towards these people. Nobody's going to North Korea to see just how gorgeous it is. They're going there to see just how oppressive it is. And so therefore, Pyongyang Airport is rarely ever frequented. You sometimes travel. I've never, in the, for the love of me, ever been to an airport that's empty. But if you go and check out vloggers on the YouTube machine, that visit Pyongyang Airport, that visit North Korea. When they go to Pyongyang Airport, it's like, oh, it's a horror movie. They could totally be like, see, like something will start in the background because something might just come creeping up at you from the back. When have you ever gone to an airport and had no traffic in the road en route, no traffic on the road going away from the airport, and also no human traffic inside the airport, including guards? Like, it's just empty. Where you have to knock. Like, try and figure out what's going on. Like, flail your hands by the sensor so it can open. When has that ever been a thing? And yet that is Pyongyang Airport. That's what happens when leadership in a land is ridiculous. Do you understand what I'm saying? Even when a country can do so much better because it clearly displays that it has an ability to do so, it just doesn't. South Africa, it's like Pyongyang Airport, all of it. Like it's barren, it's bereft, it's like tumbleweed all over the show in the background um, where there should be bustling activity. And yet there isn't. The country is not getting beyond its third world status and even as an emerging market as opposed to a market that has arrived precisely because it is so defeated, so full of witchcraft, so full of um, backtracking, it holds back, it keeps its people in a bunch, its uh, government is corrupted, there's always power cuts, got businesses always failing and so even though the land is really pretty, it's beautiful. You see it in the background as I record. It's got world standards type of infrastructure. Do you know why South Africa is so popular in terms of emigration into it, um, or migration to it? from the rest of Africa, people in the rest of Africa. I, I used to have this friend from Nigeria who said that the reason why he, he wants to get citizenship in South Africa is because the infrastructure here is great. Nigeria is the second, is the first, is the most um, lucrative economy. It is Africa's leading economy. So basically you would think that why not stay in your country is better than South Africa, but they say, the Nigerians, that they want to come here because the infrastructure is so great. In other words, there's electricity. In other words, there's good roads. In Nigeria, just about everybody that has a car has a four by four because the potholes there are so ridiculous. So if Nigerians like to settle for South Africa because it's got better electricity and roads, it must mean that our is, is you know an animal farm all animals are equal but some animals are more equal than others well all african countries are equal but some african countries are more equal than others when it comes to, to, to infrastructure we all just are bust we all suck but others are better south africa is just better than nigeria we i mean i was lamenting about potholes en route here but i'm driving a regular sedan vehicle uh and my car did not just kind of like land in there and just stay like a sinkhole because the potholes are not so gargantuan that it is impossible entirely to drive on the road without a four by four but they're there because the government is corrupt so they are better than nigerian potholes but they're not quite at the standard of world driving in first world countries where you don't have to experience potholes. The only place where there are no potholes in this country are highways because it would be wholeheartedly dangerous. There would be so many car pileups and so many accidents on the highway. So they build highways properly, but all the inroads, like where it is that you do exiting from your own house to the highway, there you are going to be like, gah, 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 gah. so this Nigerian friend of mine was like, I mean, really, in, in Nigeria, we get power cuts that are like, you could be in the dark for like five days with your electricity bill paid up. Almost everybody has a generator. So in South Africa, it's not five days, it's two hours. So for them, it's like, it's better. So they come here and then they face xenophobia over and above their like, you know, other issues that they might experience over here. We are very xenophobic, we are also defeatist, and we could be Africa's leading economy, but we're not because of stupid things that we keep on doing. And on top of that, we could be declared the first country in Africa to essentially be first world as opposed to third world, and yet we're not quite getting there fast enough. Why was Nelson Mandela so famous and popular with Hollywood with celebrities, and yet all of that clout that he had did not come on right ahead and make out of all of us a better thing? 
what the world is there for doing is just scooping up South Africans and taking them on some since treating them like randos I'll take them they took our Trevor they took our Elon they took our Charlize and they will keep on taking them they're gonna take your Karabo okay I'm gonna leave I was about to say they took our Doja cat but Doja grew up in the US however her daddy's South African and he's a deadbeat dad while he's at it so I, I just like I don't get what's going on up in this monster except I do get it you love witchcraft you inducted South Africa into the new democracy through the Illuminati and so that is why everything is falling apart we are an experimental hub we are like Raccoon City and Resident Evil some place in Africa to experiment on we're supposed to be better we're supposed to have bigger and better things the rest of Africa even admits that it is better to be here than where it is that they're at infrastructurally anyway yet there are countries around South Africa that are poorer than us and yet whose economies are growing faster than us so obviously we've got a problem out here in these streets and i'm out here trying to highlight what that issue is la lawyer you are witches and you are into sabotaging your own economy and while 20 years is a small amount of time in the grander scheme of things when it comes to redevelopment of a country after it comes out of a bar it certainly is enough time to improve so much so that others can be like africa's really on the come up it's doing well it's no longer just an emerging market but it's basically arrived like, it's been 30 years since the new democracy in the new South Africa or whatnot. And we are still an emerging market. I don't get that. Why are we still an emerging market? And why are we third world when we have got first world infrastructure? It's because our electricity keeps on puffing up, blowing up a steam, all up in our grill. It's because our um, roads still have potholes on the in, uh, in the inroads. It's because neighborhoods that are black for the majority of the time even though our government is black so it's like an uncle tom i entirely disregard it and these are neighborhoods mind you that are tourist attractions like soweto soweto is the most popular township in no never mind south africa but africa it is the most popular township in africa it's the right where nelson mandela grew up in the cranberry k over here okay soweto you would imagine they would give much attention to it because of the level or the amount of tourist attraction or the amount of magnetic power it has for tourists and yet if you go to the car seat okay if you go to soweto my goodness they uprooted in old botch the road where baragwana hospital is at the most i guess popular hospital in africa my goodness, they uprooted robots there. You know that intersection in Rockville with like an, a roundabout and yield signs as opposed to robots. While they had also built a Ria Vaya track there. And I'm like, Ria Vaya is like for a bus, busing system, right? And I'm like, why would you take robots away? Everybody knows that at a four way stop, everybody moves a lot slower than when it's a robot. Why would you take it away in the busiest jugular road in Soweto? It's literally the jugular of Soweto. It is the one road that leads into all of Soweto. Like, if you're an old part, you are going to Cladi Soweto, you're going to Middlelands, you're going to Dobsonville, you're going to Rockville, I mean, you are going everywhere in Soweto from that one jugular. And they took away robots from certain parts, chocolate blocking it even more. What is going on there? What is happening? Somebody tell me. It's a curse. It is written in God's word that the Lord will confound the speech of the wicked. It is written, oh my goodness, I need to drive out. Lest this ticket should like reject me when I get to the thingy because I've already um, put it in the slot machine there. Tough thing. Uh, this here is a problem of spiritual proportions. It is literally a defeatism of a country induced in it by the prince of the power of the air who has come to steal, kill, and destroy. While Christ has given all of us life and life abundantly, but you refuse to acknowledge him. The Lord has a thing, a bone to pick, guys, with lukewarm Christianity. More than he has a bone to pick even with atheism. I'm not going to ram into you, guy. I'm a good driver, okay? Um, more than he has to pick with atheism or perhaps even worshipping other gods. Because you are claiming to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ when you are not. South Africa apparently has got 78% of Christians all up in it, okay? Allegedly, apparently. South Africa has that as, 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 as like its statistics something to boast about a nation that loves god but it isn't it's lukewarm and so god is spitting it out of his mouth this nation is not truly regenerate it's not truly born again it is however claiming to be that way while also persecuting the servants of the living god so what does god do to such arrogant and pompous structures he confounds their speech he makes their intelligence no more he makes them fools he makes them listen to false prophets guys thank you are you letting me in i guess not okay fine then go uh he makes them listen to uh false counselors he makes you take the uh, advice of Baal prophets as opposed to Micaiah and then you go and you grab Micaiah Karabo hello what's up what's good right and you make her eat meager portions of bread and water because she prophesied accurately about the fact that you're gonna die in battle tomorrow or something because your name is Ahab that is South Africa when you are a nation that is supposed to love God out eat Israel but you serve idols your punishment is exorbitant it is worse even than nations that just don't even regard God at all that's why China is as prosperous as it is albeit being as God hating as it is it's never claimed itself a God servant it's never claimed itself God's disciple it has never claimed itself as a Christian nation and so because China has never ever claimed itself a Christian nation it's doing very well not that God is blessing them for their idolatry but the Lord is certainly not punishing them for their hypocrisy South Africa is being punished for its hypocrisy. And you are sitting where you are sitting as a nation with beautiful infrastructure, great parking lots in, in, in what do you call this, in malls. 
and banks that close at 3 30 when they are close to tourist destinations i for the life of me do not know what's going on the slowness of this country to progress is beside me i don't get it because we should be doing a lot better our universities are not half bad like literally we've got really great edu edu educational structures we've got good people look at me please like i'm great we've got really skilled people up in this joint very intelligent minds for eons and decades but they're suffocated they're squelched they're stymied they're harassed and sabotaged they are finding themselves unable to fulfill their legacies their businesses are being thwarted by a failing economy when it should be the best one in africa and yet it's gone on to be bumped down to number two please take my ticket I can talk for days, no car detected, that is not true. Yay! I almost like I was not able to get out because of how long I was speaking in the car. That is this nation. That is South Africa. The Lord has said, I know your works. You are neither hot nor cold. And because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out your mouthful. I'm not going to spit you out my mouth for. That is what God is basically saying in South Africa. You have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. You have a reputation. Listen, literally, you got out of apartheid through the glory of the Most High. Okay? Christ redeemed you from that tyrannical beast. And here it is that you are out here in these streets, spitting in his face like those ten lepers. That neither, Those nine lepers that did not come back to Christ to thank him after cleansing him. After cleansing them. Right? South Africa, you are a nation under judgment. You have got a beautiful land. People come here and visit and want to stay. And then they realize, which you lock, my goodness, do I really want to stay? Because if you stay for longer than just 10 seconds in this country, you start to feel the blow of all of the indiscretion on the ground. People in this country are defeated. They thwart one another. I am such an excellent freaking South African, okay? I was supposed to do excellent things in this country. I was supposed to benefit from Mandela's apparent alleged thing that he did for us. And yet, here it is that I'm sitting here at 37, unemployed, having been unemployed, by the way, for eight entire years. And yet, there is not a single soul that can deny that I could do so much more than what I'm currently doing. You refuse to let me work because of your pettiness, your meagerness, your littleness, your jealousies, your strivings and your contentions and all of these things that make you make butt head with one another, heads with one another, war with each other, are chipping away at your country's economy while in your little meager mindedness, in your tiny little silo where you're thinking about a friend that you were competing with in high school, your country is going to the dogs. Have you ever seen a failed state? May I continue? May I proceed? Can I cross? I guess not. I am right now doing a four-way stop at a robot because you know South Africa has cut the power again. Do you, South Africa? Do you? Okay. Whatever, Zinja dogs, I'm done like proper. I will no longer bark like a dog. I won't. But I shall speak like a person and I'm not going to stop doing that. Listen, this country is dying a slow and painful death even though it ought not do so because its citizens on the ground are under some kind of a spell and the reason they're under the spell is because they will not give their lives to the Lord. It's because they won't pray. It's because they won't fast. It's because they will not make like Purim in the book of Esther and fast for their land that the people might not be decimated by the edict of a said corrupt man called Haman. I am trying to call you to repentance and you're spitting in my nose and I'm like you know what my nose is better than yours so I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna leave you with your funny little banks that close at 3 30 okay in the middle of a tourist hub. I, I am gonna leave you with your roads and your potholes and your lanterns and your matchsticks and your candles because you keep on like hanging out and like power cut boulevard. I'm gonna leave you. I am going to leave you with your cars that always get stuck because people can't afford petrol anymore because they lost their jobs. I'm leaving South Africa. I'm leaving. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm stepping. I'm making the step in. Trevor Noah made a joke about that a couple of years ago. Trevor Noah made a joke about how it is that uh, the whites of this country after Nelson Mandela became president were like, oh my goodness, it's gonna be gangster. I'm going to Australia, I'm going, I'm leaving, I'm going. And they did. My oh my, how they immigrated to Australia. And we were like, bye bye, au revoir. We've got for ourselves a rainbow nation. Ain't nothing you wanna do to us over here, we're gonna kill it. And Trevor Noah, my goodness, it was a joke back then. Now I bet he's just having a little bit of a sour, sour moment of, you know, insight, a moment of reflection on some. It was supposed to be a joke. That white people left here, those that were still with racist streaks inside them because they thought a black government couldn't do any better. It was supposed to be a joke. We were supposed to laugh at them after going to Australia and leaving and saying to them, look at us now, look at us now, 10, 20, 30 years down the line because we killed it anyway, irrespective of having a new government that everybody underestimated and having it supposed to be just a joke. It must be, like I said, a moment of reflection that is quite sour and bitter in the bones of Trevor Noah. Why? Because, my goodness, it turns out that those people that were going to Australia, going, leaving, were right. They were right to leave because the black government has toppled this country into shambles. It's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. 
it is embarrassing australia might not likely have been the best country since covid 19 has become a little bit of a prison colony again however it was up until before covid 19 a much better country to live in than south africa it has displayed itself as the perfect place for those people to migrate to and in so migrating have shown therefore that they were right like when a racist regime the former one gets to say i told you so what in the world you have failed and abysmally the uh, what do you call the, the defeatism of, of black people in this country especially but of everybody in total has made this country a laughable thing it's a laughing stock proper of the world we are not like there are poorer countries than us that are reliant on us for many things as well that are growing faster than us as economies and yet we as south africa are still actually staggering about like a drunk heart i don't get it except i do damn i'm now going i'm leaving guys i'm leaving and when i get there i'm gonna be like to trevor no i guy i get why you have to step hey you didn't say it in so many words because you were being like all decorous and you're being all com politically correct because you belong now to like people that have to be politically correct like 24 hours a day well guess what trevor i'm not politically correct hey eh? i'm a christian i'm taboo to trevor hey mark zuckerberg goes on right ahead and like blocks me on facebook moderate the living guys out of my content today one of my contents um got given a flag on facebook <laughs> mark zuckerberg goes on and flags me trevor because i'm not politically correct so I'm going to make it clear that that joke you made is not funny anymore because it turns out that it was true. Okay, Trevor, you can stay politically correct because you're not yet in Christ, but I am going to speak the truth. And I am going to make it clear that this embarrassment of a country is an abomination. And in the absence of it repenting and giving us a heart back to the Lord, it's not like you were never with him. In the absence of giving your heart back to the Lord, South Africa, you will ever continue to lose your Trevors and your Elons. And you will also ever continue to lose your Carabos and whoever else might be next on the list that's fed up with you. You will ever continue to get drained as a country. And one day this beautiful infrastructure... This gorgeous infrastructure that you have for a country with these beautiful gyms and the, these like stunning neighborhoods understand you are one day going to not even have that have you seen uh, much of syria ever since those wars declared on it um by no sorry is it is it russia not by russia russia did not declare the war but russia helped um the syrian get his life back together there again have you seen the roads how they're looking uh, have you seen some of the infrastructure there? Have you seen just how barren and torn down it is when once upon a time it used to be this beautiful community, this beautiful um, uh, neighborhood? Like it's just been reduced to rubble. I was watching something on DW News. Um, where is it? They were covering the Syria. Again, they were covering what Syria used to look like before the war. And they were interviewing this um, artist there that was into doing graffiti. And he was speaking about how it is that he's doing writing graffiti on walls of a neighborhood that he once before was not even allowed to come into because of how much it's just been laid waste by the war. Laid waste by the war of late. Yeah, the very same place where, who is this Oki? Vladimir Putin slapped people with chemical weapons uh, in order to help his best friend over there. Uh, I don't know, man. Risa Bedouard is a Turkish guy. The other one, Oli. Yeah, that one. What's his name? Erwan. No. Recep is the right dude. Erwan is the turkey guy. I don't care. At this point, they're all just doing a nasty little thing and they must stop. Okay? So what their names are is somewhat irrelevant. Listen up. Syria is looking like what it's looking like right now. And things are going to get even worse because Damascus is one of these days going to become a heap of ruins. Now, a nation that has got beautiful infrastructure and beautiful everything that does not honor God like many of the nations in the Middle East ends up having beautiful neighborhoods turned into a heap of ruins. Okay, and South Africa, that gorgeous mall that I come from now, Clearwater Mall, and this beautiful neighborhood and this green patch of gorgeous land next to me right now that I'm driving by that is absolutely scenic for me to gaze upon. All of that which you are looking at right now with me driving with my one hand and I'm going to get arrested for it. I understand it's going to be gone. No longer are there going to be vehicles able to drive into this neighborhood going home or going from home or doing what they need to do. Uh, feeling like, oh, I'm about to rest, chill, watch something on Netflix and kill it, right? Their day is going to arrive if you don't repent and give your life back to the Lord South Africa. Hey, dude, I'm going in. The day is going to arrive, okay, when this beauty, when the glory of this, like, green neighborhood, which, by the way, is not true of Soweto, who in the heaven understands why there are no trees, Kokasi, I don't know. This beautiful, gorgeous neighborhood that you're watching me drive into right now is going to be a ruinous heap. And graffiti artists are going to be able to draw on walls like they did on that uh, bin wall. On the electricity uh, uh, gasket joint, whatever, you get my point. Uh, the day is going to arrive when literally the, the glory of all of this, all of this is going to be no more. Because as a country, I apologize, I'm, it's like the tenement of drinking and driving, what I'm doing right now. The glory of your neighborhoods is going to be no more. Because there will have been bombs that landed, all different kinds of infrastructural destroyers, like war. 
they will have landed because your country will not have covered itself with the strong might of the fortress who is Christ. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they're safe. That's what God has to say. So when a country is righteous, they like Israel. Have you seen Israel? Even though everybody's always all up in his grill trying to come at it, right? Um, it's nonetheless a cup of trembling. It's a cup of trembling. Yes, they have not honored God, but they are the apple of God's eye and the world's timepiece, prophetic timepiece. And God's going to go back and get his people. So Israel is guarded. It's protected. It's beautiful. It's still really gorgeous. It is this thing. It's the, it's the only democracy in the Middle East. And it is the most beautiful country, frankly, in the Middle East. That's why everybody wants it so badly. That's why everybody's really fighting the Israelites for the Gulan Heights. It's theirs. Like, please, like, God gave them the land flowing with milk and honey. It's theirs. But everybody's actually in denial. Busy making all that war there by the Gaza Strip, Palestine, stop. It's Israel's, right? And God is going to ultimately give those territories back to God. Those people who try to partition his land and like spoil it, blunder it like they did with his clothes um, when he was busy dying. God is going to give them back their land, all of it, including the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights are already Israel's, okay? Jerusalem is Israel's. It's nowhere to be found in the history books of, um, who do you call this? Oh, the sun is all up in my grill. It's nowhere to be found uh, in the history books of in, in the Quran, like it's not mentioned anywhere in the Quran, and yet the Quran claims that Jerusalem belongs. The Muslims are claiming that Jerusalem is theirs, whereas Jerusalem is, uh, Jerusalem is mentioned I don't know how many times in the Bible, right? Whereas it's not found anywhere mentioned in the Quran, and yet Muslims are claiming that Jerusalem is their capital, their city, their whatnot. They want to go and grab it and call Tel Aviv the capital of Israel, which is not true. Like, no, please. Tel Aviv is in Israel, but it's not the capital. Jerusalem is the capital. They want to grab the Gulan Heights for all of that oil and gas all up in there. And then they also want to go and grab the Gaza Strip. Fine, whatever. Do what you want to do. You're going to fight until the Lord rocks up and takes the Gaza Strip back says Gulan is theirs and so is Jerusalem couple of trembling don't mess with God's people so the same way that God got the back in the territory of Israel so too does he have the back therefore of those that have given their lives to the Messiah that the Israelites rejected okay Christians I am like the Gulan hearts or the Gaza Strip or or Jerusalem people out there need to be trying to claim me as their own now I belong to Jesus hey I've been given to God's people now Hey, I'm not going to marry an unbeliever. Hey, stop. Hey. And people are like, no, we're going to fight you. We're going to wave, wave our Palestinian and Syrian flag. We're going to go and bring our revolutionary guard call because we're Iran. We're going to even go and partner together with Vladimir Putin and come together as Ezekiel 38 and 39. And, the... and then God's going to bring an earthquake and stuff. No, okay, what are you doing? She's my daughter. And you don't get to go out like that. I will, however, make her like, Israel, like Jerusalem. A cup of trembling. You will shake in your pantyhose, okay? You will stumble about like a drunk man, and then you will eventually acknowledge that Karabu is God's. In the same way that the Golan Heights are Israel's. Um, so, South Africa, if you don't want to give your lives over to the Lord, you're not going to have that protection. But nah, as for me alone, I will make like a lot too. I won't leave you. Eh, I'm going to leave you. You don't live in South Africa. I'm sick and tired of all people. Eh? Nobody wants to live here in this environment, in this country. I'm very clever. People are acting like I'm stupid. Eh, what's the doing thing? I'm not going to handle you. I'm living, no. I'm living. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have problems. 24 hours there. For what? For what? I'm leaving South Africa. Yanshia. Can be like, I'm about to go to Nambo. Nobody says that. No, it's not even right. I just, people, you know, they're very silly. But just for you, I'm like, then do something, brother. Show that you deserve me as a beloved, beloved of Jesus. Show that you deserve me to stay in the country over here. Otherwise, if you don't want to display that you love me by respecting my body, you know, I'm just. By going on to respect the fact that I'm a child of the living God, I'm going to do stuff like that. But instead, you're like, no, but garabo. Nothing is my Allah, babe. Nothing, sister. Oh. I'm like, eh, brother, me, I'm Colin Hines. You're showing your flames. I'm trembling, me. Hmm? I cause people to go drunk and I'm like, Israel. I'm like, Israel and Jerusalem. Them. You come against me, God will go show you flame, throw it quick then, go and night. You will understand what day it is and what time it is. His name is Jesus. You don't touch his anointed. You are messing with the absolute wrong person. You are doing it and you are going to suffer somewhat blow. It's going to be horrible for you on that day. Please, brother, leave me alone. But if you don't want to leave me alone, I will scratch you. And I will scratch you so bad that you will get infection that will spread like gangrene and there will be nothing left of you anymore other than to amputate your leg. Don't say I didn't warn you, brother. Eh? I told you go to Jesus, but you know what? Eh? What is wrong with your brother? Eh? I'm going to show flames, man. Because it's what I do. Come here with rubbish. Come here with rubbish and I will show you. For kickstart, I will be Bruce Lee. Flying kick in the sky. I know it's because Jesus downloaded flying kick into men and come and I lamp us to slap you and you don't know middle name, brother. Don't go mess with my I am a disciple, no? Mm? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Righteous run to it. I'm safe. I'm safe. Oh. Don't come with problem, brother. I mean, leave me alone. I don't have problems now. I don't have this time for this nonsense. What kind of rubbish is this? Go to a mall and come back empty handed. You need to South Africa. You can keep it, man. You can keep it. I'm alright. I don't want to be here anymore. So I don't this place. It's just rubbish. Just wasting my time. I don't have time to waste in rubbish, man. Do I look like I've got time to waste? Eh? I'm thinking that I'm just gonna go make babies. Come here with nonsense. I don't have time for this rubbish. Everybody coming at me telling me that I'm the biological clock is ticking. Hey, hey. Who cares? Who cares?
Who cares? I don't care. I don't care. I'm sad. I'm yaki baby to 93 years of age. Don't come tell me problems. I don't have rubbish me. Did I knock the car? Do South Africa? I don't care anymore. I'm leaving you behind. I'm not acting like the Golan Heights. It belongs to Israel. Why are you in denial? Why are you in denial? Why are you busy bombing Gaza Strip? What is your problem? Leave us alone. Leave us. Jesus is gonna show you flames. Just leave us alone.